Testing one, two. Testing one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two. Glory to God. And uh, let me know when we hit the live screen. Welcome to Faith and Victory Church Bible Study. Hallelujah. Good to see you all out tonight. Praise the Lord. And um, we are you're glad you could join us. Hallelujah. Let's jump right on in here. Um, and as we turn our phones down, so I don't get the tape delay. Um, we, um, you know, faith, we're talking about faith, and um, we, we um, you know, in this walk of faith, we, we, we come across questions as we, as we do this, and we, we learn about the Bible, and we learn about things over time. Um, you know, one of the questions that can arise really is, is there a way that you can own purpose with deliberate, through steps, principles, whatever, be able to approach God and get answers? Now, uh, many people, uh, don't believe that they believe you know God's sovereign that God does be, or they're you know um, going in a classical Pentecostal church we kind of wait for the Spirit to move and don't don't I'm not I'm not negating the move of the Spirit I believe in the move of the Spirit I believe the Holy Ghost does things there are supernatural events there there is a side of God where He does things and initiates things um, uh, for whatever reason we do that is sovereign but. Are we, are we left at the behest of that always? Are we, are we sitting and always wanting and hoping that we're going to get that opportunity to have that sovereign move or that, that manifestation of the Spirit? Um, what do we do? Do we go to church and we have revivals and we hope that the evangelist has that miracle power for that week that I need to get to me what I have need of um, or whatever? Um, or is there, is there a means by which we can approach God on a consistent and regular basis and believe and get answers from him. Okay? And, you know, that, that question uh, has, has uh, troubled people for, for um, millennia. <laughs> you know, um, we, we get in debates in the church about this. You know, well, God's sovereign. He can do whatever he wants to do. Or I know exactly what God's going to do because he's going to do what he says in his word. Um, and, you know, then you got people coming and going, well, you know, I, I tried that. Well, I did it. You know, we got and we keep keep going back and forth, and a lot of times what we end up with is we end up battling over this. Experience. What somebody's experience? Did I leave out the R? I did leave out the R. Wow. <laughs> Went right by it. Hallelujah. That's how I talk sometimes. I just run right by stuff. Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, we, we, we end up a lot of times debating our experiences or interjecting experience into theology where it becomes the supreme or the primary source of information. Now, thank God for experience, where we experience things with God. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to completely negate this. I'm not negating experience. But when experience supersedes, oh, brother, C-E, D-E, yep. What word? All right, okay, when experience supersedes the word, we got a problem. People will argue their experience all day long. They will fight. I, mean, I, stood, I remember when I first got saved and I came in, you know, I was in the church and I was excited about Jesus and I was just turned on to the word and, you know, I was going to, you know, I carried my strong concordance, my my Rumley Bible and my Amplified Bible, and I had a little Fiat 124 sports bike, and that, they, they took up the whole dash. They were so big, you know, which, is, which is only this wide. I mean, you know, you could, a little, little two-seat, you know, five, five in the floor convertible. Um, that's all it was, you know, it was just the dash, you know. You, you, put, you, you put here, and Jane, I put Janie there, and that, we were full, okay? <laughs> I forgot how small they were. About two years ago, they had one for sale up here in, in High Point. It, it, they refurbed the whole engine, but they hadn't done that body. And I, but I took it out for a test drive. And, uh, like, like, 
The guy said, you lucky you knew what you were doing when you drove off. I said, I had one. <laughs> yeah, I knew exactly what I was doing. But I, I forgot how small it was. You know? Back when I had it, I thought it was big, you know, I thought it was a, you know, tank as a little bitty sports car. Um, but we, 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 we come, and so we argue. We, we begin to argue. Well, I know so-and-so, and I know this, and I saw this happen. And, and so experience become, become, begins to formulate our theology, our, our Christian worldview. And so, you know, th then we begin to, you know, beg the answer, well, is, is there, is there a um, means by whereby we can approach God and get answers and do it regularly? Does God answer prayer that way? You know, now we, we sometimes will make fun of, um, you know, uh, people do it. They write, write songs about it or they write books about it, you know. Well, they'll, they'll, um, they'll, they'll make fun of steps, principles. Well, I was going to spell it, didn't you? I mean, you had to keep them apart, right? Prince of Pal, P A L, is like your school, your friend. Your principal with the L E is. is, is Now, praise the Lord. I bet that's better, isn't it? Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. So, Mark chapter 5, starting in verse 25. Now, you all know this, as I was trying to say before. You know this passage of Scripture well. Um, we've covered it more than once. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll grab verse 24. And Jesus went with him. Remember, Jairus has come to him, told my daughter's at home dying. Um, come and heal her. And, you know, Jesus, and Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood 12 years, <clears throat> and had suffered many things with many physicians, had spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she heard of Jesus, okay, she heard something. Well, this is important. Okay? Five, twenty-five through thirty-four. She heard. Oh my! I remember the the heyday of the charismatic Word of Faith revival renewal era. We got we got stop signs, born again, and filled with the Holy Ghost. 
they turn into go signs. That was a, that was a joke. We reverse their we reverse their nature. <coughs> okay, I mean, we went and told everybody. We were telling, them, gotta get in this church. You gotta come see this. You gotta be a part of this. Come see what God's doing. We were sharing the experiences. Now listen, that's what, that's why I say I'm not negating experience. Okay, but we were sharing the experiences of what God was doing by people who were taking hold of His word and acting on it. Okay, and people were coming, so Jesus went with them, and there was a certain woman with the issue of blood, which she had suffered for twelve years. When she heard of Jesus, came in the press behind him and touched his garment, for she said, "We we cover this. We, um, if I may touch his clothes, I shall be whole. If I may touch his clothes, I shall be whole." She said and kept on saying the Greek. Um, and straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And the spiritual ones, the disciples, said, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and why sayest thou, or sayest thou, Who touched me? A bunch of bozos. All right? And he, that's Jesus, looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Woman, or daughter, Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. <coughs> <coughs> now, we're not going to pick up with any more with Jairus here. We're going to stop right there because that's the end of this part of the story. Okay? So we have this woman. She's heard something. She's heard something enough. But what could she have heard? She had to hear something, you know, and I think we just kind of covered some of this a couple weeks ago. We, were, we had a couple week break, so I'm going to kind of segue back over here and come up here and kind of, you know, um, with Brother Bill ministry. They were out sharing the truth. They were going to tell people. Remember, um, Don Francisco had a great song called Gotta Tell Somebody. Kind of his follow-up hit to um, He's Alive, you know. Got to tell somebody, you know. Um, you know, they went out and started sharing abroad what happened. They would testify the things that happened. People just the more people, the more they testified, the more the people came. Yeah, we had curiosity seekers. We had people wanting to know who this magician was. But they, but here we got to this one woman. She heard of Jesus. She got up out of her bed under the penalty of death and came in contact with other people because she had a, she had a communicable disease. Therefore, she was she could be stoned for being in public. I mean, and not crying unclean. No, she wasn't crying unclean. She was saying, if I can touch him, I'll be whole. If I can touch him, I'll be whole. But she heard something about experience. Now, listen, the theology wasn't based on experience. They had experiences based on, you know, the word and action that they were telling her about. Okay? Now, we find here principles. So we find the systematic approach, steps, principles, formulas, Whatever you want to call them, you can write, you know, you know, seven steps to this, seven formulas to that, seven principles to this. We're saying the same thing. We're talking about a systematic approach. In other words, there are things that we can look at from the Word of God. We can approach it not as um, putting a puzzle together. If you do this, you're going to get a whole puzzle. But there are steps here. There's a formula. There's formulas here. There's principles here. There is a systematic approach to the Word of God whereby we can see. God has given us a path. So let's say, maybe change this to say this is the systematic approach or path to answers. God creates a path. Now, we, we the Old Testament. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and seek my face and pray, and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. Amen? Isn't that right? Okay? I'll hear from heaven. I'll heal the land. I'll forgive their sin and I'll heal the land. Okay? So he said there's a path. There's a systematic approach. Okay? Humble yourself. Seek my face. Turn from your wicked ways. Pray. I'm going to heal your land. I'm going to come and I'm going to hear from heaven. I'm going to forgive your sin, and I'm going to heal your land. 
Okay? So God has this in the Bible. He puts these in here as roadmaps, as markers, as, as ways for us to understand how to get there. So that we're not over here, as in, in my opinion, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to uh, get rid of some of my uh, ex extemporaneous extra things there. We're not left where, where I kind of grew up. And understand, um, I learned the move of the Spirit in my denomination I grew up in. We, uh, I learned the Holy Ghost. I learned how he, I learned him in manifestation. I was, that's where I learned that. I, I'll be honest with you, I didn't learn that at Ramah. Because, you know, at that time, that, that, you know, Brother Hagin came out later and said the Spirit of God spoke to him and said, you've got to start having Holy Ghost beads because if you don't teach this generation the move of the Spirit, it's going to be lost to an entire generation. Okay, that's when he started doing that in the 90s, he started having the Holy Ghost meetings in the 90s. Okay, but back before that, that wasn't going on. Although he, in his earlier ministry, that he had had those things, but he had been teaching the faith, the Lord's, you know, and he'd been doing other things. But that's, but I learned my Pentecost, my, my Pentecostal roots is where I learned the move of the Spirit. And, you know, and that was kind of made, I was kind of a little bit of an oddball around a lot of our, our people because they were strict Bible teachers and never had, the, never had, manifestations of the spirit and that they didn't they didn't recognize or they didn't flow that way They're sometimes very staunch less is over okay because they didn't want emotionalism you gotta have both you gotta move the spirit and the word of god okay so we would if jesus was coming through we would hope that he would have some kind of miracle manifestation and it would just happen That, that, would be, that would be us. That, you know, that would be us. We'd be waiting for the, the, the power to fall. Oh, Lord, send the power just now. You know, let it baptize everybody. You know, we were waiting for it to fall out of heaven and hit us. And, and, and there were times we would have that. I'll be honest, that we would have that. I'll never forget a camp meeting back about, 19, about 1979, 1980. I went down to the Falcons Children Home down in, in Dunn, North Carolina. And uh, it was a general conference. For the Pentecostal Holiness Church Eastern Conference of, the, of this of North Carolina, and they had Dr. Ray Hughes, a general overseer of the Church of God, uh, ministering. And while he was preaching, um, wow, well, there was an expectancy for this. That see, people didn't uh, didn't get it. They had an expectancy for God. These camp meetings, we we just believed God was going to move in these camp meetings like this. And he's preaching right in the middle of the sermon. I mean, the power of God hit that place and it came unglued. Just boom. Power of God, everybody's, you know, he, he said, this is a divine interruption, and just we just went. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was, and it was, it, it was it, and I know now, I mean, even now, looking back, that was the Holy Ghost. Okay? But well, you can't wait for the general conference, or, or the, you know, the conference meeting of the Eastern Conference of the Pentecostal Holiness Church of a special guest speaker coming in and having the goods that particular night, and it happening. We, you know, and thank God when, when we have that and we have those manifestations, praise God, glory to God, it happened. And people got ministered and got blessed and things happened. But you can't wait for the next year or maybe the next four years for the, for the general con super, you know, conference thing out in Oklahoma City or, you know, the worldwide meeting or whatever. Okay? Um, we can't wait for the right person to show up in town. People die in the process waiting for the next Whatever. So, thank God for my Pentecostal roots. I learned the move of the Spirit, and we've, we've blessed people. Many, many, many people over the years have been blessed because of the impartation of that anointing from where I grew up. There's been numerous things. So, see, we are not demeaning the move of the Spirit and the manifestation of the Spirit in any way. <coughs> what we're trying to say is, that when we don't have that type of manifestation of the Spirit, we're not left hopeless or helpless. Most people are not going to receive healing and miracles or, or, or physical miracles or financial miracles or whatever through a manifestation of the Spirit. And that messes up a lot of stuff. Most people aren't going to receive it that way. Most are going to receive by believing God.
Now, I'm not, like, again, I'm not putting down. I'm not cutting. I'm not demeaning the, the, the manifestation or people receiving that way. I'm saying that God did not leave us in a situation where only when the, when the special anointing shows up in town can you get something. Okay? Okay? All right? There, so there's, 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 a, there's steps. We learn these steps from this particular experience here. She heard. Now, the Bible says that when she heard Jesus, you know, she got up in the press and went and touched his garment, for she said. Okay? So uh, the, first one, the first thing this woman did was she spoke something. She said something. What? She said what she was looking for. She needed an answer. She began to speak her answer. Okay? Um, Proverbs 6, 2 says you're snared by the words of your mouth. You're taken by the words of your mouth. Um, it, verse 28 of Proverbs uh, 6 says, no, I'm sorry, verse 20 of this particular passage says, if I can touch his clothes, I shall be whole. If we want, an if we want answers from God, you've got to say the right thing. You've got to say it. Okay? You gotta say it. You gotta start speaking it. Your mouth releases faith. How do you know that? Well, Mark 11, 22, 23, and 24. Verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that the things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. I don't see how you can get around. You got to say it. Okay? You got to say it. That's part of it. As a matter of fact, it's the first step of it. You're going to have to open your mouth and begin to speak what it is that you believe God will do. And you're asking God to do. You got you to begin to say it. Now, this is not going, oh God, I wish you would. I'm a hoping and a praying. Uh,. I need a miracle. Oh, God, move somehow, some way. That's not faith. How do you know? Because you're not convinced in your heart. Faith is a confident assurance. The actual little Greek even means a confident assurance. Okay? Faith is a confident of assurance that what you're asking, what you're, what you're speaking, what you're asking, what God will do. You're confidently assured God will do what he says in his word he will do. So the woman heard. The woman heard of Jesus. Remember that? She heard of Jesus. Then she said, because, you know, he came in the press, touched his garment. For she said, and again, the Greek there, in uh, verse um, 25, 26, verse 28, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. The Greek says, for she said, and kept on saying. That's, how, that's the tense of the verb there. Say it. For she said, she, that, that tense is she said it, but kept on saying it. <coughs> it was an ongoing process. It wasn't a one-time event. You don't go, well, I believe I got it. And that's it. You just kind of walk off and leave it there. No, she said and kept on saying. And she said and kept on saying until she acted and began to move on it. So she came in the press behind him. Okay. Well, so what did she do? Well, the woman had, to, had said the right thing, but she needed to do more. She needed to act on it. <coughs> Faith not acted on won't produce. That went over big. Well, God's going to do what God's going to do no matter what. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Give me a scripture for that one. God's going to do what God's going to do no matter what. Okay? I'm, I'm trying to, I, I didn't have this in my notes, so I'm trying to find real quick. Um, this, um, yeah. No, Paul. Okay. <coughs> I don't know. I don't know where it is right off. I don't have my notes. And I wouldn't plan on using this passage. If y'all can find it, give it to me. Because I don't have time to kind of search here. But remember, Paul was preaching the same word Paul preached. Paul was long in preaching the same and, and he pre there he pre um he came to somewhere and there he preached a list I believe it is. But there he came and he preached the gospel. Remember that? And um a certain man, impotent from his mother's womb, the same heard Paul preach. And Paul perceived that he had faith to be healed, looked at him and said, Stand up right on thy feet. And he leaped and stood and walked. 
Remember that? Okay. But when we study that, we find out this. The Bible says Paul perceived he had faith to be healed. He wasn't up yet. He wasn't up yet. The Bible says he had faith to be healed. Paul perceived. What do you mean? The Spirit of God, word of, word of knowledge came. And he, had, he perceived that this man had faith to be healed. But he's not healed. Well, if you got faith, you'll get it. He didn't until Paul said, stand up right on your feet. When the man stood, acted he began to leap walk and praise God but until he stood up the faith was there remember when Jesus saw that you know when the four guys came into Peter's house Peter's mother-in-law's house Jesus in there preaching to the lawyers and doctors of the law from every town round about and um, remember that and the power of the Lord was present to heal them remember that they show up the guy on the stretcher and find by no ways that means they can get in. They climbed up on the roof and tore the tiles off the roof and let him that man down in the midst of Jesus. And the Bible says, and when he saw their faith, he said, no, obviously they're in faith. If he could see their faith, he said to the man, stand up, you know, take up that bed and walk. And he stood up. There's faith already there. So, you know, a lot of times what we have is we've got people who are at the stage of they're saying it or, the, the, you know, in other words, the faith is a present. The faith is present, but they're not receiving because they haven't taken the next step, the next formula, the next principle, the next, six, next part of the systematic approach, you know, the next, next road on the path, okay, or the next step on the path to do it. You've got to act. got to act. Now let me say this. Don't try doing it until you, you're saying it. Until there's faith present. Until you're, 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 act, you're speaking your faith and now you're going to act on it. I've seen people you know, try to, to, to do things. They're, 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 they're trying to, oh, they're going to, you know, they don't have legs so they're going to put a pair of shoes in their wheelchair and, you know, but they're not, you got, you got, you got to start. You got to start it here. You can't go to here in the middle and jump in. Okay, you got to start up here, saying it. To the point it moves you. To the point it, it motivates. And to, and to the point that you, you're, I'm acting on it. You go out and do it. Okay. All right. And so, uh, the woman had said the right thing, but she needed more. She needed to act on it. She came in the press behind him. Our actions reflect what we believe. Now, actions don't necessarily mean you do believe, but they do, they do reflect what you believe. Okay, in other words, I, I, me standing outside, you could be doing certain actions, but you skipped all the way down here to action and missed the whole heard it, say it thing. Okay, and it looks like to me you're in faith, but you're not. You never were in faith to get there. You tried to do an action without any faith. Because you're, you're pulling the lever, pushing the button. No. We've got to start with hearing. Then we've got to say it. And then actions will follow what you're saying. Okay? You're, you're, you're so convinced that you believe it's, that you begin to act like it's so. Not as, a, not as proof that you believe it, but the action is a result of you believing it. And I know that sounds like kind of a... a What's the difference? There, there is a line there that if you know, one is one is um, kind of more presumption or whatever, and not really faith, and the other is faith. And faith is based on actually believing it, being you know having a confident assurance, knowing that God's going to do what He said He was going to do. Okay. Okay. Now, the moment that we begin to act, and we're acting on it, step three falls into place. As a, as a um, what's the word I'm looking for there? As a consequence, a result of step two, because you did step one, you receive it. These could, um, you know, I'm not really sure if you could say these are interchangeable. They're on the even, even keel. 
you know, you believe you said it till you believe the faith you received it and you acted on it. You, you know, we're, we're in that. They, they kind of go hand in hand right here in the middle. Okay. You're going to have to receive it in order to do it, and you're going to have to do it in, you know, as, as, as a result of receiving it. So we're, we're kind of in here in this little, this little area of, you know, that's why I say these are principles, these are steps, these are formulas. Not, not necessarily got to be done in specifically order all the time. Now, you got to start here. You got to start back up here hearing and saying. These kind of get, get muddled as far as exactly what happens here. Okay? You see the answer in your heart. You're acting on it. You're acting on it. Therefore, you've received it um, because you've been saying it. That gets a little muddled as far as trying to separate it out enough. You know, um, there are things, there are things in, you know, in life that sometimes it's a little hard to get a little muddled as far as to be able to completely separate them. One of the things we, we, we've dealt with in, uh, historically in the church is the separation of the soul and the spirit. You know, you know, how do you say, well, the Word of God can separate the two. Otherwise, we can't separate them, okay? You can't separate the soul. The, the Word of God sharpened the two-edged sword, dividing even the, dividing us under even the soul from the spirit. Otherwise, you can't, you can't, we don't, a lot of times don't know, that's why we have to have the word, because we don't know if it's my soul or my spirit speaking to me, and we need the word of God, okay? But here, so, so the, all those may, may be a little bit muddled, I, I still, you know, still saying you're acting on what you're saying, because, and then you received it, you receive it as done. So now you're, this is how you're living. I have the answer. It's mine, okay? Um, the Bible says after she said, after she did, she got up and went and said, if I can touch his garment, shall be home, went into the press, went through the crowd, got to him and touched his garment. The Bible says she received the healing virtue of Jesus at that moment. So much so that the Bible says in a straight way he felt virtue go out of him. Now, you know, people who don't believe that you can get things on purpose would preach, you know, that God healed that woman to prove he was the son of God through Jesus. Well, the, the problem with that is that the Bible, Jesus turned around and looked at the woman and said, Thy faith made thee whole. He didn't say, I'm the Son of God. God sent me and I healed you to prove I'm, I'm the Son of God. He didn't say that. He said, Your faith made you whole. Now, I don't care how big your, your theology degree is. I don't care how many PhDs, DDs, DMs, you know, Doctor of Divinity, Doctor of Ministry, Post Hole Digger, I mean, um, um, uh, Doctor of Philosophy. You know, in theology and biblical studies, antiquity languages, whatever. If Jesus said that faith made her whole, her faith made her whole. Okay? It doesn't matter. Y'all hear? It doesn't matter what man says about it. Jesus said here in Mark chapter 5 that the woman's faith made her whole. Well, yeah, but the Bible also said that Jesus knew virtue went out of him and into her, and she knew immediately she was healed of that plague. Yeah, but then, he, what? see, Jesus understood that there was a process going on to get her to the point where she received, she felt in her body she was healed of that plague. Because, as we read in verse 24, when Jesus was on his way, left to go to Jairus' house to raise his daughter up from the dead, the Bible says the people thronged him. And we don't have any other recording in this entire passage where any of them people got healed. None. Zilch. Nada. Zero. Goose egg. None of them got healed. Except the woman who came in the press under the penalty of death who, according to the Word of God, said, now let me say it again, for she said, if I can touch his clothes, I shall be whole. The Greek uh, tense of the verb is she said and kept on saying, if I can touch him, I shall be whole. Came in the press. She went through that throng. That throng was still there. That was the press of people. Under penalty of death, went through that press, got in there and touched his garments, and when, knew immediately she was healed of that. She received at that moment see so she's doing act she's doing what she's saying if i can touch his clothes so she's acting on it got to act then she received it it went into her jesus did not take credit for her being healed i know that messes with your theology a lot of people's theology gets messed up with that but the fact of the matter is the bible didn't say jesus healed her now we'll We'll write, we'll do sermons. Jesus healed the woman with the issue of blood. But Jesus said her faith healed her. Her 
Her faith healed her. We're not taking Jesus out of the equation. Okay? God is the source of the answer. We, we, we can't do this without God. You can't receive from God without God being involved, okay? All right? That's just kind of, you know, it's like going to, going to a, um, a, a building out there and trying to use your ATM to receive cash when there's nothing in there. God, you know, God's involved. I get that. But He did not leave us in a state where we have to wait for a manifestation of one of the gifts of the Spirit. In, in this particular case, we one of the gifts of healings, okay? Or working of miracles, or special faith. So those are the power gifts of the Spirit. It, it's, we're not waiting on that type of manifestation. We're talking about a woman who heard of Jesus, and obviously she heard. That, and actually, if we go back and study a little bit closer, <clears throat> there's, a, there's a, just a, almost an obscure passage where it talks about they, people came out and touched his clothes and they were healed. Okay. And uh, I gotta go find that again because I was reading one day and just kind of ran across it and didn't really, you know, she had to hear something like that. And people just, you could touch his clothes and get healed. And she, if I can touch his clothes, I'll be whole. If I can touch his clothes, I'll be whole. See, now she went from what? Someone else's experiences to hearing about Jesus to saying it personal. She made it personal. If I can touch his clothes, I shall be whole. If I can touch his clothes, I shall be whole. She said, remember, again, the Greek, if I... If I can touch his clothes, I shall be whole. If I can touch his clothes, I shall be whole. I, she said and kept on saying. To the point she got up out of that bed where she had suffered many things and many positions, was nothing better but rather grew worse, and came out, didn't, didn't go out in the street where she's supposed to cry, unclean, unclean, unclean. She's going, if I can touch him, I'll be whole. 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 She's, she can't see anything else but her answer and her faith connecting to it. Her answer is out there in that crowd. Under penalty of death, under Jewish law, she goes because she's getting to her answer and it didn't matter. Because she said and kept on saying. So now what's happening? Circumstances aren't governing what she does. The circumstance of the crowd thronging him, there's her answer, but she can't get to it. Didn't stop her. She's, she's, man, she's on a mission. If I can touch him, I'll be whole. And so she comes in the press, and if anybody had recognized her, they would have killed her. They would have all gone crazy, got at stones, and stoned her to death. On the spot. And then gone to Jesus and said, what do you think? We did it right, didn't we? <clears throat> yeah, how'd that work out with the woman caught in adultery? In the very act. <laughs> okay, where's the guy? Speculation is he's one of the, he's one of the, the, the uh, uh, Sanhedrin, Pharisee or Sadducee. He's one of the two. And they got, he, that's a cover-up going on. They're going to kill the woman to cover up his, his sin. Okay? All right, we don't have that for fact, but that's, that's a speculation. Okay? She's doing it. She's acting on what she's believing. And when she gets there and hits his garment, virtue. Jesus said, immediately he felt virtue go out of him. Now, if it was just him having virtue and it's just going out, then why weren't all the curiosity people getting healed? Why weren't all the people there in that press that were thronging him when we were just recording all these miracles of all these people getting healed because they were thronging him and touching him? Because there was no faith on their side. They were touching with curiosity. They wanted to be able to go like Elvis, oh, I'm never going to wash my hand again. <laughs> oh, dear God, I hope so. All right? You know, they would pass out and faint, throw their underwear in their bras on the stage, and you know, you're like, are you serious? Okay? And we get people can get stupid. All right? But um So she, here we are with this woman. And when, when she touches him and receives it, Jesus felt the power. God knows the touch of faith. And it releases him into the circumstance of the situation. Whether it's physically into your body, it's into your finances, it's into your mental health, it's into your circumstances around you in life. When you touch God with faith, it's really, it releases as you're acting on it. Okay? 
And then the fourth thing is you got to testify what God's done. Okay? You got to tell it. Jesus looking around about to see her that had done this thing, but she fearing and trembling came down before him, told him all the truth. Okay? And Jesus looked at her and said, Lady, I am the Son of God. There's power in me. I'm so full of power, I zapped you and you're healed. That's kind of how we theologically or, or uh, church-wise view the healings of Jesus. You know, we see the movie, the movie, uh, NBC movie. NBC shows it all the time, Jeff, the Jeffrey Hunter movie with Jesus as Jesus. Okay? And all, you know, they always got a shadow. Of the, they don't show, they show a shadow touching somebody. You know, the hand, I had, a, a shadow of a hand coming out. And they got choir music going, weird. I can't even, I can't even copy because it it's so weird. You know? And we kind of get real weirded out by how Jesus healed people. Okay? Jesus wasn't weirded out by it. Now, if you, if you, those watching, you know, do the, you can go do this study. There are between the four gospels, thirty-two, I believe it's thirty-two, thirty, thirty-two, thirty-three, but I think it's thirty-two, recorded healings and miracles in the ministry of Jesus. Well, actually, uh, healings, thirty-two. Of the thirty-two, because of the synoptic gospels, in other words, repeats, you know, Matthew, Mark. John, or even John, I mean Matthew, Mark, Luke, <coughs> and occasionally John would cover the same event in their gospel. We have, we doubled up or tripled up or quadrupled up in some cases on a, a certain healing event throughout the gospels. So when you, when you eliminate that, you end up with nineteen recorded different healings in in the in the gospels. Nineteen of the nineteen, Jesus directly credits the faith of the individual for receiving. Twelve of them. So only seven do we not get the individual credited with their faith. What's that? That's the manifestation of the Spirit. So we see, even in the ministry of Jesus, more people got healed because of faith than they did because of manifestations of the Spirit of God working through him. Probably, I, I, percentage-wise, I'm, I'm going to guess we're talking about uh, oh. 35, 40% Holy Spirit, 60, 65% faith. Okay? So if it happened in the ministry of Jesus that way, guess what's going to happen with us? We're not going to be better than the Master. You're not going to run around and get everybody healed, just, you know, some, you know, I got the power working in me, you know. I'm Pentecostal, you know. Listen, and again, I'm not mocking the Pentecostal side of things because that's where I grew up. That's, that's, my, that's my heritage. We've had some marvelous healings. I mean, marvelous things take place. But I can't, I can't teach people to wait until Pastor Ed has that anointing this week for that particular manifestation to take place. Why? Because that's divided. Every man is a, several, every man is a spirit wills. If the spirit decides to do it that way, that's, that's what happens. Otherwise, I've got to give you something that helps you walk with God and get answers from heaven um, if I don't have to be anointed this week. What if I'm just a jerk this week and I, you know, I'm not very useful for the God this week? Yeah. You know? I mean, God wants to use me, but I'm, I'm just being an idiot. I don't feel like going out and laying hands on people tonight. I ain't doing it. Every time I do, they talk about me, so I'm not doing it. Well, then, well, then tough on the people. You're the, one, you're the one shot they know. You're not the one shot. We can teach you how to systematically approach God to... Hear, hear the, what the Word has to say. Study the Word. Okay? This is study. We, this is how we hear from heaven. You know, now let me say that. Study, God does speak to us in, our, in the Spirit. You know, there are ways that God speaks to us. I don't negate that. But if you're hearing a voice every other day, I, I, I got a problem with that. Like if you're seeing your angel every, every 30 seconds, I got a problem with that. I had a roommate like that. You know, every time I turn around, he's seeing his angel. He is right over there. He's right over here. He's right over here. I think, dear Lord, you know, he be uh, he he uh, anyway. He he get he get flaky. Not flaky, stay flaky. Anyway, 
So you gotta hear you gotta hear about Jesus. You gotta say it. Then act on it. Then receive it. Then you go tell it. You go testify what God's done. Give him the in other words, what is this? You give him the glory. He gets the glory. He told the woman, he credited the woman. He credited her faith. But he gets the glory. Because you got your faith has to be in God. It has to be in what God will do, in God's word. There's no circumventing that. You know, here you're going home. You can't, you, so, so God gets, don't ever, don't ever go get cocky. Well, I'll tell you what, even if Jesus hadn't showed up, I would have got it. I heard this one time. I heard a preacher say this, well-known preacher. Okay? I mean, it's, you know, it's kind of like, you know, Han Solo with Luke, you know. I got him. Great kid. Don't get cocky. We can't get cocky. And I heard a minister say one time, and a well-known minister, I, I still love him, I still appreciate him, 99.9999% of his ministry, I did not agree with this statement. Because I, I thought, now maybe he, in his mind when he was saying it, he was thinking of a different way, but, so I, I won't give him that leeway, but I can't, I can't ever repeat his, his, his doctrine or teaching or whatever. If Jesus wasn't real, if God wasn't real, if the by word of God wasn't real, I'd still do this way because it works. If Jesus wasn't real, if God wasn't real, if the Bible wasn't real, we wouldn't, we wouldn't even be here. Hello. And it wouldn't work because faith comes from God. And our faith has to be in God. Okay? Even when you have the faith of God, you have faith in God. Okay? So we cannot remove God as the centerpiece of who gets all glory. You work his word, you do his word, you act on his word, you live his word, you live according to his word, you believe his word, but it's still his word. <clears throat> the answer came from him. The path, you remember talking about this? That we, when we see in the Bible, we see steps or principles or formulas. We have a systematic approach or a path to answers with God. Okay? And, and in a simplistic method here in Mark chapter 5, verse 25 through 34, here it is. It's you hear it, you say it, you do it, you receive it, and tell it. You give God the glory. You don't talk about how great your faith is. You talk about how great your God is that your faith is in. Okay? Now, your faith can exceedingly grow. Your faith can, you can have great faith. But it's not you. It's still... I'm telling you, he deals to every man the measure of faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can have exceeding growing faith. But what? even the faith of God that we operate with is still based in faith in God. There is no circumventing that. So let someone hear what I say and start thinking, these, these people are arrogant. They think they know everything. They think they do it without God. No, we cannot do it without God. In Him I live and move and have my being. Glory to God. The faith that I get comes out of His Word. Okay? He is the author and the finisher of my faith. Or the author and the developer of my faith. And then when I use what He has authored and developed in me, He gets the glory for the results. Even though He may say your faith did it, he still gets the glory. Why? Because he authored it and he developed it. And he gave me the answer. He gave me the means by which I could function and operate with that faith and get answers from him. It still comes back. It still comes back. It came from him. So we can never take credit about how great we were. Don't start singing how great I am. How great I am. You're an idiot. Or as Dr. Phil would say, you're an idiot. Okay? No. That being understood, don't ever, that's why we got, you know, we talk about praying the prayers of consecration and dedication and worship. You know, there, that's why we can't just pray the prayer of faith or prayer of believing and receiving. We have to pray these other prayers so we stay humble before God. We've got to stay humble before God. Because when we get down here to number four, he's be, he better be getting the glory. He better be getting the glory, not you. 
because you want to undo you want to unplug your faith you want to turn it off you want to short circuit everything start taking the glory for yourself he said i know i will not share my glory with any man i'll not he's not going to share his glory and say it one more time he is not going to share his glory so don't get cocky and think you can take some of it. Okay. Last year when my toe was, you know, healing up, you know, I, I said, Doc, I told the doctor, I said, I know how to believe God. But you know, in, in the end of all this thing, I have my toe, and I have my toe because God's true, God's faithful to His word, God's faithful to the faith that He gives us to to live by. I have a miracle. I have a miracle toe. My toe did not, my head did not get me this. Faith that came from God. Faith that was infused from God's word. Faith that was imparted into my spirit because God's word says, said that by his stripes I was healed. It's why I was able to believe. I could not have believed otherwise. So I, I, even if I studied the Bible and get revelation and listen to the tapes and, and get, get the word of me and make the confessions and I'm saying and I'm doing it and I'm acting and I'm receiving it, da -da 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 -da. in the end, he still gets the glory because it all came from him. Not the sickness, not the disease, not the infected toe, not the doctor who wanted to, Mr. Hacky Wacky, who wanted to cut it off. All right? But all the path, the whole path of the answers came from him. So in the end of all this process, after I've heard it, after I've said it, after I did it, after I received it, I begin. I tell, he gets the glory. The author and the finisher, the author and the developer, the beginning and the end of my faith gets the glory. Can you say amen? And we have gone over. All right, praise the Lord. Well, those of you that joined us tonight, we're so happy to have you tonight. The Lord bless you. And uh, join us again next time. This Sunday morning, we'll be on, we'll live running about 11 o'clock live here on Mevo on Faith and Victory Church. Uh, join in with us. Be a part of our service. If not, if you're local and you want to come, come visit with us. We'd love to have you. And until we meet again, remember this. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. God bless you. We'll see you next time here at Faith and Victory Church.